It's just a plastic chair. But the O chair is stylish, recognizable, and quite possibly the most comfortable plastic chair in the world. The design of the chair is inviting to sit in. It's nice to look at, but it invites you to sit in it. And when you do, um, uh, there's a, a nice surprise about how it feels as well. I think people do look at products and think, you know, I'm not going to want to recycle this in a couple years. I want something that's a little bit more durable, more important, better designed, more thoughtfully designed. So I think it has a lot going for it that way. The chair was introduced in 1999 by Umbra, the company formed by childhood friends Paul Rowan and Les Mandelbaum in Toronto. Their idea was to give household objects a fresh, stylish look. Our philosophy was to go to those everyday objects and think how can we reinvent them, how to improve their design, how to make them more functional, uh, sexy, interesting, and at the same time, try to make them affordable so they're accessible to everybody. And that was the, the basis for our whole business. Each week, the in-house designers at Umbra need to share ideas on everything from picture frames to wine racks. It's functional, it's also decorative. I think that's what people are looking for. So it's a coming together of all the different departments and just giving opinions about what they see in front of them. For the O-Chair, their first piece of furniture, Umbra approached Karim Rashid, one of their favorite designers. Karim had already started on a path of doing very interesting curvilinear objects. He'd been pitching us for a lot of different ideas. He's really good at designing beautiful, graceful objects, and that just works for Umbra. It was a very pragmatic approach to design working with him. He had a certain style that we loved. The inspiration for Karim Rashid came one night when he was dining out in New York City. And we were sitting on those white, generic, polypropylene, chalk-filled chairs. I'm paying 40 or $50 for a dish of food, and I'm sitting on a $5 chair. Halfway through the dinner, the chair broke, and I fell on my ass. At that point, I went back the next day to my studio, and I started drawing plastic chairs. It turns out their Japanese clients loved the design too, and in fact are credited with naming the chair indirectly. To tell you the truth, the, the original name was Ohm, but we were sitting in a meeting with the Japanese when we first launched it, and they really loved the design and everything, but they said, no, 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 we can't call it Ohm. That's the name of a terrorist organization in Japan, and so we immediately just cut the M off the, uh, off the Ohm, and it became the O chair. Production starts with a plastic called polypropylene that arrives in pellets. Polypropylene as a material has certain qualities that are appropriate for using in a chair. Uh, it's very durable, it has uh, a lot of flex to it, so um, when you lean back in the chair it will support you and also flex in the right positions. It's tough, so if you drop it, it won't shatter. It's also very impervious to any kind of chemical, so you can clean it with with soap and water, you can clean it with chemicals, so it's, uh, it's tough in that sense. The polypropylene arrives at the factory in its natural state, a milky white color. Then they add pigmented pellets to color it. Color selection is, is difficult. I mean, there's lots of people out there with color forecasting services, and they'll tell you what color is going to be hot in five years from now or not. We don't really follow those. We follow our gut instincts about that and what we really like. They also add an ultraviolet stabilizer so the chair can be used outdoors. The sun won't deteriorate the plastic. Rain doesn't affect the chair. Cold weather doesn't really affect the chair. The plastic pellets are transported via vacuum hoses to the injection molding machines where the plastic is heated until it melts. The molten plastic is then forced into a mold cavity. It's forced into the injection molding tool and at the end of that uh, cycle, the plastic chair is cooled and the parts formed. Injection molding allows the chair to have negative space. And that's what's cool about the O-chair. It's what you don't see. I love the uh, negative space, the holes in the chair itself. Polypropylene has a really nice movement in it. So I started cutting holes out of it to A, use less plastic, B, allow the chair to flex. And the holes afforded me to stack the chairs with the legs going through the holes in the back. It's loaded with function. It takes about a minute for the part to cool down, and then it's taken out of the mold by a robotic arm and dropped onto a conveyor headed to inspection. Any chairs that don't pass muster go into a machine that's like a wood chipper, where they're ground into bits and reused. Because it's a single part and a single material, we can just take whatever imperfect parts we find 
and grind them up into pellets again and, and remold them. They're placed in plastic and shipped on pallets to another location where the steel powder-coated legs are added. Still a bestseller for Umbra, the oat chair is an eye-catcher, recognizable on patios everywhere. If we really look at the 10 years of the oat chair, the numbers are phenomenal, really. And it's a very, very iconic and successful chair.